so up next, we're going to talk about um, some, some current stuff, but also thinking very far forward, because everybody hates driving, right? I'd much rather have my car drive me to work than, uh, than me have to drive. We want to make sure that that's nice and secure. So these guys are going to talk about whether we can um, trust self-driving vehicles. Um, let's give them a big round of applause. Have a good time. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to stand here. Good afternoon. Today I bring you the latest work on attacking self-driving vehicles. The title is, Can You Trust Your Autonomous Car Vehicles? I would like to talk about our latest work on vehicle security. I'm Jian Hao Liu from China, and I work for Qihu Sui City in SkyGo team. Fox Research uh, Vehicles Cyber Security. I'm Chen Yan. I'm Chen Yan from Zhejiang University, and Dr. Xu is my advisor. Uh, she is a professor at Zhejiang University and University of South Carolina. Uh, I believe she's hiding somewhere in the audience because she wants us to do our work. <laughs> okay, this talk. Uh, in this talk, we first introduce what is uh, autonomous vehicles. The idea of car hacking by sensors and present our world attacked. At last, we discuss a possible defense. With the development of car hacking, ranging for conversion cars with telematics to autonomous car, the car is in increasing in interacting with the environment. The third opens up new attack surface. In this talk, we show you our work on autonomous vehicles. So, what are autonomous vehicles? Autonomous vehicle can sense its surrounding and uh, make a driving decisions by using, using the machine learning algorithm. Basically, a car that can drive itself without human doing anything. According is, uh, to this international standard, autonomous driving can be divided into five levels. An, an example of level one, adaptive control, where we must put hands on the steering wheel. Level three, conditioned uh, automation, where hands can be off the steering wheel. Yet, the driver is still needs to take over for time to time. Level five is full automation. A car can handle all the driving models and drives itself without a human in it. So basically, we can sleep in your car. Typically, Tesla is considered as level three, and a successfully Google car will be level five. This is the uh, architecture of autonom autonomous vehicles. First, uh, the car has to have uh, sensors to monitor these surroundings. And for more ad advanced cars, they will have a V2X. Where V2X stands for vehicle to anything. Then the sensor data can guide vehicle movement and uh, to plan and uh, control the path. The driving plans will be for formed to the driver by HMI. The HMI is means uh, machine uh, uh, human machine interface. All the driving decision will be executed by the car. Th this is how automatic to driver works. Let me show a few automatic driving application. They include autom autonomous light keep, autonomous light change, autonomous light overtake, autonom autonomous highway merge, and autonomous highway exit, uh, and aut autonomous interchange. Autonomous vehicles have a rich set of sensors, which include the following. Uh, it's about uh, uh, unique, uh, 
uh, ultrasonic, ultrasonic sensor can identify objects nearby. Camera can use identical road, road scenes, lines, and measure car designs and speed. LiDAR creates a 3D map by scanning the environment and plan the driving decision. Radar can identify cars from middle range to long range and measure the designs to car in the front. This speed is moving direction. Because these sensors, the car can sense the environment and identify what kind of obstacles are nearby. Finally, the car can make decisions for driving. Of course, the automatic driving are controlled by electronics that's the, to cover a regular car into self-driving car. One has added uh, uh, electronics to control the ultrasonic directly. This, this way, the car can send commands to control brakes, electronic power string, and so on. So, how can I attack autonomous vehicles? We are sensor data guide to travel route of the car and the sensor safe as the plan to control the car. Thus we set a scope of our attacks. Attacking the sensors on autonomous cars, if we can modify the sensor data in driving decision will be made based on fact data. What is displayed on HMI may be wrong and may be a mistake. The past planning may not be correct, which leads to wrong execution. In short, the reliability of the sensors will, will be affect the reliability of the automatic driving vehicles. Now to up to now, the most advanced automatic driving can that we have access in Tesla. Tesla has the drive advanced autopilot system, which relies the, the autonomous, autonomous driving at between level two and level three. Basically, Tesla has all the features of the autonomous driving. Thus, the autopilot system still requires the driver to place his hands on the steering wheel. It has already changed people's driving habits. Unluckily, this habit change has led to a recent inc incident, which is cause of sensor malfunction. Thus, the re reliability of sensors is important. If autopilot can fail under normal yet speckled case, what will happen if there is uh, international, intentional mal 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 malicious attacks? As, as is the same as China to have a traffic addition. So there is a three type of sensors in Tesla. One of millimeter wheel readers, a middle range radar is mounted in front of the Tesla. And a camera, a front looking camera is mounted on the Windy share under the near rear mirror. And the 12 ultrasonic sensors. Ultrasonic sensors are clawed clo near the front and uh, near the bumpers. That's a video. We will show how we can fast the sensors and the cars, which make the autopilot of Tesla to mere, mere function. Let me show you a few videos, give you the highlight of our work. The first is a spoof ultrasonic to take HMI have a mirror function. Now, Yan Chen is behind the car. Yan Chen is here. 
He is ready to close now. But the HMI can't display the designs. Ah, uh, close. <laughs> now, uh, Yan Chen off the device. The HMI displayed. So, we can the HMI mistake. 然后再关掉 uh, Last Thank you Next video is a ghost car This is our tech go to controller car Uh, this is a ghost car in front, so we can start autopilot system and starting driving. But in in front of the car have a no no car. When the car pass the Yanchen, the ghost car can force our car to stop. Display to it is displayed to hit the ghost car, so it, the car is to stop. So, thank you. Uh, I guess I'll take it over from here. Uh, the first type of attack is on ultrasonic sensors, and we have tested this attack on Tesla, Audi, Volkswagen, and Ford. So, uh, uh, what is an ultrasonic sensor? It is a sensor that measures distance generally within two meters. Uh, it is used for um, parking scenarios like parking assistance, parking space detection, self-parking, and also on Tesla, there's uh, this feature called summon, which means that you can park the car without even being inside the car. So in a parking scenario like this, uh, generally there will be a display of distance it is either acoustic or visual, so that we can know the sensor readings. So how can we misuse ultrasonic sensors? So imagine uh, someone dislikes the owner of a shop, and he wants the car to keep backing into the glass wall. So he did something to the sensor that the car does not stop while it should. So what will happen? Well, I believe most of you want to protect your parking spot. It is really annoying when someone gets parking into your parking spot. So um, instead of putting up a sign, uh, if you can do something to the sensor that makes the car stop in the middle of parking, that would be awesome. So uh, before going into how these misuses can be done, let me walk you through how an ultrasonic sensor works. So an ultrasonic sensor, it emits ultrasound and receive echoes based on the piezoelectric effect. I believe this technology is uh, motivated by bats. So the sensor generates an uh, ultrasonic pulse and it, tr it propagates and hits an obstacle and bounces back and creates a uh, receiver pulse. So, we can measure the, uh, so if we can measure the propagation time between the uh, transmitter pulse and the receiver pulse and knowing the uh, speed of sound in air, we can basically we can calculate the distance uh, from this very simple uh, formulation. So there are three types of attacks on uh, ultrasonic sensors. The first one is jamming attack. So jamming attack generates ultrasonic noises that causes the denial of service of the sensor. And spoofing attack, uh, it crafts fake echo pulses so that it can alter its distance. The third one is acoustic quieting. It means that uh, this attack can diminish the original ultrasonic pulses so that it can hide obstacles. To validate these, att these attacks, uh, these are the equipment we, we used. Uh, so first we need uh, uh, ultrasonic transducers that can emit ultrasound. Uh, and second, we need uh, signal, signal, uh, signal suppliers that can generate excitation signals 
Uh, in our case, we use uh, either uh, Adreno or a uh, single generator. Um, to make it start a faster and cheaper, we use off the shelf hardware, but you can totally design your own piece uh, of, of Jammer. So the basic idea of jamming attack is to inject ultrasonic noises at the resonance frequency of the sensor, which is generally between 40 to 50 kilohertz. Uh, and it, it can cause the uh, denial of service of the sensor. So as illustrated in the red figure, uh, so for, first we, there is uh, on the sensor, there's transmitter pulse and the uh, received echo pulse. If it generate an ultrasonic no noise at the jammer, so this noise will be received by the sensor, and this noise will fully cover the um, original echoes. And we have tested this attack uh, in the laboratory on eight uh, models of standalone sensors, and all those on, on four vehicles. So um, for, for this uh, indoor uh, experiments, uh, as you can see on the red figure, it is uh, uh, a figure of e received electrical signal at a sensor. Uh, when there's no jamming, you can see that there are, there are uh, acquisition pulse and the following echo pulses. So it is how it works. Uh, and, but when there's weak jamming signal, you can see that the noise floor has been increased. And as we increase the noise floor, you can see that when there's strong jamming, the noise can fully hide the original echoes, so no measurement is possible. So what about the sensors? What is the reading of the sensors? So basically we get, we get two very opposite types of results. The first one is zero distance, which means that the sensor detects something very close. And the other one is maximum distance, which means that the sensor cannot detect anything. So how should cars behave to jamming attack? Should it be zero distance or maximum distance? If, it's, if it is zero distance, it means that the car detects something so that it will stop. But if it's maximum distance, it means the car cannot detect anything and the car will now stop and will keep moving. So obviously, zero distance is a fail safe option for vehicles, right? However, uh, according to our experiments on cars, uh, the result is unfortunately the maximum distance. So um, let me show you a video that demonstrates how it is really maximum distance. So this is an ultrasonic sensor on Audi Q3. And this is a ultrasonic jammer, which is wired to a computer. And now from the uh, screen of the car, you can see that the jammer has been detected as an obstacle, uh, as displayed in, in the white bar. And we read this, the data from the OBD. The, it says distance is 28 centimeters. And now let's turn on the jammer. And the obstacle disappears. <laughs> and the distance it says is maximum. <laughs> so in conclusion, uh, jamming attack can output at maximum distance and it can hide obstacles. So let me summarize the result of jamming attack. So on ultrasonic sensors, there are, uh, there's zero distance and there are maximum distance for different sensors. And on cars with parking assistance, the result is maximum distance. Well, interestingly, uh, from the menu of Tesla Model S, it says if a sensor is unable to provide feedback, this instrument panel will display an alert message. However, we have never seen this alert message. Well, another question is, how will the car behave when, like, uh, self parking and someone that the car actually drives itself based on these false sensor readings? So let me just show you a video of how we do this attack on Tesla Summon. So as you can see that there's nobody in the car and uh, this is me standing in front of the car, holding an ultrasonic jam jammer. And now Jen Hao turned on the Tesla summon. Well, normally the car will not move because I have been detected, right? However, when we jam the sensor, it moves and hit me. <laughs> that hurts.
Well, in conclusion, jamming attack can also hide obstacles when the car is driving for itself. Uh, you might ask, well, the distance is only like 20 centimeters. Can it be longer? Well, of course, because if we increase the voltage level of the jammer, like uh, we use, uh, if we use uh, or sorry, uh, an Arduino output at 5 volts, if we uh, output at uh, 20 volts with a signal function generator, we can increase the, um, the attack distance. So in this video, uh, there's a man uh, standing uh, behind the Tesla. Uh, this, is n this is not me. This is another brave man in our lab. Uh, his name is Wei Bing. Uh, this is more dangerous. <laughs> so now the interferer is off. And I turn on the Tesla summon. And you can see that the car starts reversing. However, the it will not move because the man has been detected. And now we turn on the uh, function generator to uh, turn on the interferer. So watch closely. Now we turn on the Tesla sum again. Well, it moves. I, I hate the man. <laughs> I hate the interferer. So um, the car only stopped because the interferer has been hit. Thank you. <laughs> because the interferer has been hit and stopped working. So um, jamming attack, the distance can be increased if you have enough budget, right? So let me summarize the readout of, of, of jamming attack on, on, on software against something. So the car uh, enters its snares. The car does not stop and enters strong jamming. It might hit someone or something. So there's another question. Uh, why some sensors output their distance and some output maximum distance? Well, we believe it is because of different sensor designs. For their distance, the sensor compares the signal with a fixed threshold. So if the signal exceeds, the voltage level exceeds a threshold, it believes that there's a justified uh, echo. So the jamming signal actually increased the voltage level. So the sensor thinks that, hey, there's, um, in, uh, there's an echo right after I transmit. So it is zero. Well, for maximum distance, we uh, kind of started the sensor on Audi Q3, broke it, probe it, and, and reverse the schematic. Uh, but we didn't find any useful information because they, it is um, application specific, I say. So all these signals are processed inside the chip. So uh, to, to make it easier, we uh, started another sensor, which is known as Maxona MB1200. It is another sensor that outputs maximum distance. So uh, we basically we have to destroy the um, transducer on top of it and expose the circuits. So this is how it works when there's no jamming. You can see that the, the, the white line means the uh, time of flight, and the blue line means the echoes. Well, you can see that there's uh, activation pulse and there are, there are echo pulses. And if you watch closely, the time of flight exactly match with the Echo, the first echo pause. Uh, and when there's strong jamming, uh, when there's weak jamming, uh, you can see that the noise floor has been increased, but the, di but the measurement is still uh, correct. However, when there's strong jamming, you can see that the uh, signal is totally overwhelmed by noise, and it seems that there is no echo. So the sensor uh, outputs maximum. Uh, we believe it is, uh, uh, it uses adaptive threshold. So it is used for noise suppression. Well, um, the designers definitely has a good intention in designing this, but they didn't consider the malicious scenarios. Well, the uh, second type of attack is a uh, spoofing attack. So the basic idea is to inject ultrasonic pulses at a certain time that can uh, fool the sensor. So for example, uh, if we craft a fake pulse right before the first original one. We can kind of spoof the, uh, the uh, trans propagation time so, it, so that we can manipulate the distance. But this attack is non-trivial because only the first justifiable echo will be processed. So there's kind of like an effective time slot, which is right after the transmitter pulse and before the first echo pulse. So you're going to have to inject within this slot to make it successful. 
And if we, if we change the arrival, arriving time of the fake echo, we can ma manipulate the sensor readings, right? So this is a, a video that demonstrates um, the spoofing attack on Tesla. Oh, sorry. So this is Jammer connected to, connected to a computer. Uh, this is a computer. And you can see that the Jammer has been detected and, as an obstacle, and distance is 66 centimeters. And now it starts moving. Wow. So distance has been altered. <laughs> it's a stop. And if you look outside the vehicle, there's nothing moving. And if you, if you look at the instrument panel, the spoofing is still going on. <laughs> so in conclusion, spoofing tag can alter distance. Uh, and this is a demo of spoofing tag on Audi. Uh, in this video, we just randomly alter the distance. At first, nothing is in front of the car. Well. I'm assuring you that the jumping bars are now volume indicator of the music. <laughs> so spoof and tag also our distance on Audi. Uh, let me summarize the result of spoof and tag. So spoof and tag can manipulate sensor readings both on standalone sensors and on cars so that we can make the car stop while it shouldn't. The third type of tag is acoustic quieting. Uh, a, a method is uh, acoustic cancellation, which means that we cancel the original one with a uh, sound of reverse phase. So, uh, so the, when they add up together, there's no echo at all. And from our experiments, uh, uh, we observed that by matter of phase and amplitude adjustment, we are able to cancel ultrasound. But if you want to cancel, cancel ultrasound from the car, you're going to need to uh, use dedicated hardware. So uh, a, easier way, a easier way to do this is cooking, which means that we absorb the ultrasound with some kind of sound absorbing materials, uh, like, like some, some acoustic damping foams, which is very cheap, and it has the same effect as jamming that can head obstacles. So this is how we uh, cloak a car. Now we drive toward the car, uh, this lovely panel car, and you can see that the car has been detected and displayed as the, the right bars on the screen. And now we'll apply the acoustic damping foam. <laughs> well, it disappears. And we, we drive closer to the car, still nothing. And now we remove the damping foam and it reappears. So, uh, <laughs> so in conclusion, Cloaking can hide a car. So what about human? Can cloaking also hide human? We tried this. So this is me walking across the car, and you can see that I have been detected by the sensor. But now, if I wear the damping foam, <laughs> I'm invisible. and still nothing. <laughs> well, can you think of a new way to wear this foam? Here we go. This is a dump, <laughs> this is a foam scar. <laughs> it also works. So cloaking can hide a human. So if you want a car, a human, or glass to be invisible, just buy this. Well, um, by the way, uh, behind the glass door is my advisor's office. So this is what happens when you uh, let our students do all the work. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the, the third type, uh, so the, the second type of attack is on the millimeter wave radius. So we have tested this attack 
on Tesla Model S because we don't have uh, the, the other three cars don't have a reader on it. So uh, MSW reader it measures distance, angle, speed, and shape, uh, etc. From from long short to long distance, uh, it is used for some high speed and critical applications like adaptive cruise control, uh, collision warnings, and blind spot detection. So how can we misuse readers? It is similar. So uh, when there's a, uh, you're driving on highway and there's danger ahead of you, and you want to stop, but the car, if you do something to the, to the radar, that the car does not stop where it should. It could cause some serious accidents. And if there is danger behind you and you want to steer away from it, but the radar tells you that there's something ahead of you, you have to stop. So that would be terrible. So let me, let me walk you through how a radar works. So a radar transmits and receives electromagnetic magnet waves and measure the propagation time and etc. It is uh, similar to ultrasonic sensors except that the signal is, is, is RF. So uh, when we're dealing with RF, uh, it is uh, difficult to measure the time because it, it travels at the speed of light. So uh, in order to do this, we have to do modulation so that uh, we can make this process easier. So the most popular, one of the most popular modulation scheme is FMCW, so uh, which is kind of frequency modulation. And the Doppler effect can be used to measure the relative speed and the, there are two major frequency bands, which is at uh, 24 or 76 gigahertz. So this is how um, the frequency modulated continuous wave works. Uh, basically it is kind of like a sweeping frequency signal, so the frequency actually varies uh, with time. And when the signal is transmitted and it hit a target and bounces back, we'll receive a similar uh, receive signal. And what, what, what we'll measure is the reflection time, but it's difficult. So we measure the difference frequency FD and calculate the time knowing the, uh, the ramp slope. So sometimes when the car is moving relatively, uh, there will be a Doppler frequency shift. So um, before doing the tax, the first thing we have to do is to understand the radar signal. So we, we're going to have to analyze the signal to find out uh, what is the frequency range, what is the modulation process, what is the ramp height, and what is the number and duration of the ramp, and what is the cycle time. So after doing this, we can, we can know whether jamming tag or spectrum tag is feasible, right? So this is kind of like a, a family picture of all the equipment we used. Uh, special thanks to Keysight Open Lab for providing us uh, free access to this equipment, which is three times the price of Tesla. Well, um, so I'm going to uh, uh, explain which ones I use later. Well, um, I forgot one thing. It doesn't have to be so expensive because uh, you can actually, you, you can just buy a radar and modify it to be your own jammer. So this is how uh, we analyze the signal. So first we receive the uh, radar signal with a, home, uh, with a home antenna, which is connected to a harmonic mixer and analyze the signal from the frequency domain on the signal analyzer and on the time domain fr from the oscilloscope. So basically what we found is that the radar outputs at 76.65 uh, gigahertz as, as a signal frequency and bandwidth is 450 megahertz. Modulation is MCW, but uh, I have, uh, we have known all the details of the charts, but I'm not, I'm not going to tell you because uh, I want to be responsible. So uh, the idea of jamming tag is to jam radar within the same frequency band, which is 60, 76 to 77 gigahertz. So uh, we can jam at fixed frequency like this, and we can jam at sweeping frequency like this that covers all the frequency band. Well, the, the, the idea of spoofing tag is to spoof the reader with similar RF signal, something like this. Pretty straightforward. And to, to generate the reader, reader signal, we have to uh, generate the signal with a signal generator uh, at, at 12 gigahertz and multiply the signal to, with a frequency multiplier and transmit it with a home antenna. So before showing you how, uh, how the, the results are, uh, let me, um, introduce you how the autopilot displays. 
So the blue icons means that the uh, traffic aware cruise control and auto steer is on. And the blue car means the car ahead of you has been detected and locked. And we have to do the experiments when the car and, exper and the uh, equipment is, is stationary because uh, when the car is moving and in case our attack is successful, the car might hit the equipment. And if I damage the equipment with three times the price of Tesla, I won't be able to graduate. <laughs> so this is a demo of, of jamming attack. So in this video, I am standing in front of the Tesla controlling the radio interferer, as you can see from the camera of the mobile phone. So now the autopilot is turned on. And the car containing the equipment has been detected as a blue car. And now I show how, uh, so now the interferer is, is, is turned off. So we turn on the interferer, and you can see that the blue car disappears. And we turn off the interferer, it reappears. We have, kept, uh, we have kept trying this for many, many times, and it works every time. <laughs> so Jamie Attack and Rita can hide obstacles so that the car may now stop well, it should. So let me summarize the result of all the uh, reader attacks. So for jamming attack, it can hide obstacles, which has already been, detect been, been detected, uh, and either fix or sweeping fix it works. Uh, for the spoofing attack, we can spoof the distance of the car ahead. So basically, what we have, what we have seen is that the car actually jumps forward and backward. Well, the third type of attack is on cameras. Uh, we have tested standalone cameras from MobileEye and, and PromptGree and tested it on a Tesla Model S, which has a MobileEye. So camera uh, actually detects ob objects uh, by computer vision. Uh, there's forward camera and there's backward camera. It is used for limpid, lens departure warning, lens keeping, uh, traffic sign recognition, and also for parking assistance. So how can cameras be misused? So a camera is mainly used for steering. If the camera does not work, the car may not steer where it should. So there can be some accidents. Well, the attack we have on, ta uh, on camera is blinding attack. So basically, it means what we, we jam the, uh, the we, we, uh, there are three types of interference we use. Uh, there are LED spot, uh, laser pointer, and infrared LED spot, which are all very cheap. And there are two scenarios. The one is we point the interferers directly at the camera, and the other is we point the interferer at the calibration board and reflect back to the camera. So it is, this is a result of, of, of blinding with LED. So uh, when the LED is, is pointed to all the, the calibration board, there's only partial blinding. But when it's, it is faced toward the camera directly, there will be a total blinding. And this is a without when we use a laser beam. Uh, it is even more prominent. Uh, either fixed laser beam or wobbling laser beam uh, can cause total blinding. Uh, and there is something we didn't expect is the permanent damage of the camera. So you can see that there's this uh, black scar on the camera. And we have to send it back to the vendor and have it repaired and cost, a, cost us a lot of money. Uh, which I don't care because it is Jen Hao's camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a demo uh, of, 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 of blinding the camera with the laser beam. This is a view from the camera. And now we uh, point the laser beam at the calibration board, and you can see that the effect is uh, it's not very effective. However, when we point the laser beam directly at the camera, you can see that there's uh, this blurry white and blurry red, and you can now see anything. So you can imagine what will happen if uh, the camera on the car has been blinded like this.
so laser can blind camera. Uh, we have also tested infrared LED. It doesn't work very well. Uh, we have tested blinding uh, cameras on Tesla. Uh, well, the good news is the Tesla actually gave you an alert message that asks you to take over uh, when there's jamming time. So it is uh, kind of like a, a relieving response. Well, um, we have uh, uh, submitted our findings to Tesla uh, and got their active response. Uh, they uh, appreciate our work and they are looking into this issue. Well, uh, looking forward, how can we improve these sensors? Well, to begin with, the sensor has to feel safe. Uh, for example, this zero or maximum distance for ultrasonic sensors, it has to be zero distance so that the car will stop instead of hitting something. And it should also be uh, designed with uh, anomaly detection function. Uh, I believe at least jamming attack is easier to be detected because there is a uh, abnormal strong level of signal. And also increase the damage of sensors, such as using multiple ultrasonic sensors for measuring one distance. And also using different types of sensors to, uh, for like a uh, kind of double check. And also in the system that does the sensor data fusion, uh, it is better if the trustworthiness of these sensors are evaluated uh, so that when, there's, uh, when the system does not have enough confidence in the sensor data, it will stop the car uh, from self-driving. So uh, it, can be, it can feel safe. Well, safety is always uh, more important than convenience, right? Well, what's next? Uh, in the future, we hope to, uh, to get the output out of the sensors directly. Uh, so instead of uh, a black box approach, and we hope to read uh, the, the sensor data and the actuator, actuator data. Well, we hope to carry out uh, moving uh, vehicle experiments to, to, to examine whether these attacks are feasible when, when vehicle is, is moving on the road. And we hope to uh, measure the longest, uh, the maximum attack range and angle, and also how we can improve the performance of these attacks. Well, um, in conclusion, I hope what you can get from this work is that uh, attacking existing sensors on cars is feasible. Uh, we have found many ways to fool sensors. Uh, some attacks are easy, well, some, some are non-trivial. So the sky is not falling. It's not like someone on the real side can easily just attack your sensors. Well, for the manufacturers, the sensors should be designed with security in mind so that uh, we should also always think about intentional attacks, especially when the sensors is going to play a very important role in self-driving cars. But for customers, uh, do not trust semi-autonomous cars yet. You have to always be careful of yourself. Well, will we have fully secure autonomous cars in the future? Let's wait and see. Well, these are the people we like to thank. Uh, without the help, this work would not be possible. These are our colleagues that helped us in the experiments. Uh, if you want to know more details about this work, please check out our white paper or just write us emails. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If you have questions, if you have questions, you can come up here. We'd like to answer.